parts of all of all the pieces we need to build the grills, like the handles over here. These are the hood handles. Because we build these things in production run, you know, to take the labor out. So we, oh, just, okay. we just set up and we make a I made a machine that actually it actually you clamp the three pieces in the machine, you push a button and it, it rotates as it welds and Wow. Yeah. And you actually created the machine to do uh, that. I got all kinds of machines. <laughs> I'm a machine guy. You know. I'm mechanical. I'm, I'm a red blood American male, ain't I? <laughs> yeah. You know, what's this computer stuff? I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we you know this is where we keep all the. It's really hard to see in here, but we just got oh, no, piles of of all the pieces in the park. Capone and Bubba Tucker. Yeah. There's your axles for your. Yeah. Axle, yeah, axles. We cover it up because actually this was the last. I put on besides that one. Okay. And when I got off this roof, I thought I put that last screw in. I said I'll never see that roof again. That was the first one that started leaking. Oh. You know, and, and what and why? Because I left that wood up there and I actually screwed into the wood, which they told me I could do. Come find out I shouldn't have done that because if it gets a little bit of moisture on that screw, it rots out the wood. Your roof gets soft, and you can't just put a screw back in rotten wood. Uh -huh. so I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna put a deck up here anyway, so it's all gonna come off. But um, you know, it's just one of those deals. Mm -hmm. But anyway, this was our actual our storehouse, and it was a lot neater before we started getting all this wood over here. But it is what it is. And this is gonna be the new Tucker Cooker manufacturing area with a with a uh, apartment upstairs. Yeah, this is going to be like the downstairs. When I get through with it, we'll bring them over here and we'll assemble all the parts and stuff on Okay. Watch y'all step. Remember, we're in construction. Oh, yeah. But this, um, this side is where we usually do all our cutting, the shear, the brake press. Uh, this is a plasma machine here that cuts out different shapes, um, uh, depending on what we need for it. Um, like here's some, here's some stacks getting ready to go together. They've been assembled. They're getting ready to go together for the for the hood, of course. We have all kinds of little fixtures and jigs that holds that together, so they all come out in exactly the same way. Yeah, man, I'm really uh, impressed with the uniformity. Yeah. But uh, you know what? That's hand. That's handmade. Oh, I mean, it is. That's y'all getting together and just working on and, and yeah. building it. Yeah, it's a, there's a lot of hand in, in, in the Tucker. It's not a. It's not a just a machine. It's produced not a product. machine produced product at all. We, we have fixtures that hold this together as we as we weld it, so that they're all welded to a standard, but it's still welded by a human being. Right. And it's it's checked, you know, to make sure it's true and straight, and and everything works correctly on it and everything. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of steps involved just to, to make sure that um, our customer gets exactly what we intend for them to get. These are parts here for the warmer, the new warmer we've come out with. Oh, um, yeah. Okay. Uh, these are the in interior parts of the stainless steel that we actually make this part here. Uh, punch all the holes in it and the slots and, and then we... Uh, it's all bent in a in a brake press. Uh, this is all the same steel inside. This 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 fits actually inside a um, the larger body of the warmer, which should be okay. the body. This is the body of the warmer. I can put it up here, maybe get a little bit of it. Here, go ahead and this is actually the outside of the warmer. I this see will go it. on the inside like this. As it gets assembled, of course, it then it'll all tie in together at the floor and the top and the, and the mechanisms and so forth to make it work. And then you got the shelves that you line up the down shelves, through here. Got a little shelf rack that bolts in here that that gives you a adjustment on your shelves and so forth. Now this is bare steel here. But when you, you look at the cooker, it's that beautiful paint job. And I just wonder how in the world do you guys do that? Well, paint is one of the more difficult things. But what we do, and, and I can show you really better on, on one of the grills over here. Um, like this is the, the stage of the manufacturer once we get these things turned up on their feet. 
In other words, what we do is we build them upside down in a, in a fixture. And then we, we, we paint the bottom of them and wire the bottom of them, put the axles on it. We do everything that we got to do on the bottom side while they're upside down. Wow. And then we flip them out and turn them over and they kind of come out like that first one you see up there. Doesn't have the doors on it, doesn't have the insides on Let's it. Let's take a look at that now. So this, in each step of the process, this here would sort of be the first one as you flipped it. This is the first, this, this, this is as we flip it over, um, we've come back in here and we've, we've set some of these parts on here that are going to end up being to the side here. Okay. And it all has to line up. The, if, the, if the tucker has a gasket on it that goes up the side and around the top. So these places on the tucker grill have to be perfectly lined perfectly up. lined in the correct place so, so you have the right uh, 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 gap and so forth to work with. So we actually have a, a, a fixture that will go in here and hold this gasket seat and this hole exactly in line with each other so if so we maintain that that proper uh, alignment uh, right wow look at there okay so then as we move along in the process you come down here and you add another part right what I what I did I actually started here on the on this end down here you see all the parts are put in here the doors are hung the sides are welded in. All this is welded around here, and you see this all ground down to, yeah, uh, to that, one piece. There, that plate matches perfectly, right. just like you said. Right, okay. right, right. Uh -huh. um, then once we get it to this point, we'll, of course, we'll complete the, the rest of them. Then we're going to come back with a, uh, with a DA, it's a DA sander um, with 80 grit sandpaper. And we will sand this whole thing down. You can kind of see up underneath the bottom here, if I can't get any light, how we've already previously done it. It's all been sanded down smooth. Oh, okay. All these well po points, you see where it's been blue from the well, the little edges where you may have some little sheer edge on or something. Mm -hmm. It'll all be sanded down and rounded off so there won't be any sharp places, but it gives a good surface for the paint to, to get its here. claws on it and yes. get here. Right. So then that makes longevity of, of lasting because the water can't get to it. With painting, it's all about preparation. Yeah. If you don't, you know, the, it, it, the painting is, is the easy part. It's how you, it's how you prepare your material and uh, how it's going to uh, be able to uh, maintain itself without, you know, th this thing is constantly going through these heat cycles, warm and cooling, warm and cooling. And, 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 and the grill also, contract. yeah, the grill's outside in all kinds of different temperatures. So it's, uh, the painting is a very critical part. And if it's not, if it's not done, uh, meticulously, really around little places like where you where you got your hinges welded on, that's got to be cleaned very, very well. Or those those are the places that will that your paint Begin will start to, to will start to uh, cause you a problem, right? Yeah. Then then when the box gets hot, you know, you got your heat box right here. Well, I guess the actual heat box yeah, on the, the other fire side. Fire box is on the other side. This is the clean out. Just okay. like open it up. You got full access to everything, and you can see this one right here doesn't have the second shelf. It doesn't have the charcoal rack in here, so and this is actually where you can get it on, on the tuckers when you pull all that stuff out, showing how easy it is to clean everything. There, there's no voids, there's no place in here for a, uh, uh, you know, spiders and dirt daubers and stuff to kind of get in there and hide from you. You know, now, that's the thing, you know, I always talk about when I talk about your cookers is accessibility. So essentially, you got this box here, you take everything out, and I mean, you're looking right in the box. That's it. But then you got the top. When you bring it down, you're sealed up just like you mm -hmm. would a barrel cooker that you can't get in. Well, look. When I first designed the tucker, I don't like to work, all right? And and I designed something that when I got through cooking, I'm I can clean it out in 10 or 15 minutes and I'm gone. You know, I'm right. not out there scrubbing on it all day long. Climbing up in it. I made all this stuff where I can come out. I can lay it down my driveway. I can hose it off, whatever I want to do to it, and throw it back in. And I'm ready for the next cook. You know. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, you slide, you, there's a, you slide the grease ash pan out, and, and it's it's done. Dang. Yeah. Um, well, now, uh, what was I going to say? I don't know what else, man. I mean, that's awesome. God. Uh, these, these are some of these machines I was telling you about that I'm, I'm in the state of, you know, of course, I'm like a one-man band around here. But, right. Um, 
This little machine right here, I actually built it just out of metal laying on the floor. But what it does is we put a sheet in here and it puts the roll on our hood. Okay? Oh, wow. And you'll notice on the back, the back piece of metal right here. I'll walk over here real to show you. If you see this piece of metal right here, this is one piece. It goes from the seal. It's got kind of a two inch roll. It comes down with a nine degree bend that comes out. So it's a big Z, I guess you would call. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, this piece is rather difficult to make in the brake press because uh, whenever, you, whenever you use a brake, especially on a roll like this, sometimes the material wants to pull away from you. And, and these dimensions are very critical so that seal will, will seat correctly. So in order for me to try to maintain this correctly, I've been, been working on, I haven't finished yet, but this machine here, which actually works, I just had to fine tune it. But this is your 90 degree bend, and then this is your roll over here, okay? okay. So as we'll slide a sheet in here, this thing comes down and clamps it. This thing comes up to, to bend your 90. This thing comes around to make your roll, and it's like every part comes out perfect wow. every time. And you've got hydraulics down here that power it. Yeah, there'll be another cylinder attached here. Okay. Uh, we've just been in the testing stage right now, but it's, it's got a little rust on it sits sitting around in Memphis weather, but it's a brand new machine. Right. It's, 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 it's just a matter of a little bit of my time to get it up and running correctly. Man, now, man, American ingenuity. And I'll tell you what, by God, they can't ship this overseas, can uh, they? Uh, <laughs> see, that's the thing about it. Uh, people have asked me about my grill. I said, George, aren't you worried someone's going to copy you? Well, they can copy what I'm making today, but they can't copy where Tucker's going to be tomorrow. Right, right. You know? And, and I, you know, uh, so I'm not worried about that. Right. This is a new machine. I just bought it. Actually, isn't up and running yet. It's a turret press. And you saw those holes I punched in my, in that warmer. Yeah. We do that on a brake press with, with what they call Uta punches, C-frame punches. But you can only punch a line of holes because a brake press is a line. So mm -hmm. you got to put your sheet in there and punch that line, set it down, then you got to change everything and pick it up and go back through it. So there may be five or six different operations. This machine right here, you actually clamp a piece of material into it. This is an X motor and a Y motor, mm -hmm. and it maneuvers the sheet of metal around up underneath the press right there. Okay. That in the press operates off this turret punch that you have these individual um, stamps. Uh, you got. You got to. Uh, this is the punch. And then you have the dies. And they go into these little die holders here. You can put. Um, I think it's 28 inch and a half sizes, and then we have six of these big three inches. And these things will spin around to the appropriate whatever punch you want to punch to the place as this thing maneuvers your sheet and pops that hole. Wow. So I'll be able to put the whole sheet in here. Write a computer program. Send it down to this NC controller. It tells this machine to move it around and punch all my holes for me. Man. So it's going to help us um, design to that capability. Right. Where before I didn't have that as, as easy as this. I got this thing out of Phoenix. This, this machine was actually uh, in Phoenix, Arizona, punching the, um, the armor plating that they were sending to Iraq for the Humvees. Wow. Yeah. So it's got a little bit of cool history about it. Okay. But it's, it's really a neat machine. It's, it's been sitting around here collecting dust because it's taken me a while. I had to rewire my shop and put new air in and all kinds of stuff. But it'll be cranked up June 4th. I just told the guy, let me get through Memphis in May alive. And we'll <laughs> crank this thing up, you know. <laughs> well, man, uh, uh, tell us about your, your Memphis connection and Memphis and May connection. You know, we were talking about John Willingham the other day. And uh, how long have you been involved in Memphis and May? Well, uh, you know, being just right up here, around the corner from it, you know, uh, people have asked me uh, for years to come down there and help them cook in the contest or, or just participate and so forth. And uh, mainly my participating was uh, to, to climb down the, the bluff and drink most of their beer and I'd climb back up. You know? <laughs> but um, I knew John Willingham. I've known him for, I think, I think it was 1981 or two I met John. And uh, I helped him with his cookers. I, I built some of them for him, and uh, kind of, kind of uh, 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 got interested in, in the championship through him a little bit. Um, but uh, uh, you know, I, I came from building truck bodies, and, and my, that was my deal. I, I was building truck bodies. I really wasn't interested in barbecue grills until the Tucker idea came along. 
and and it kind of just sucked us in. And uh, of course, being right here again, you know, that's a natural for us. Memphis and May on the Mississippi River is just it's like it's our backyard. Yeah. And and so we got involved in that, and 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 we've been doing it now. I think this is our third year. And uh, you saw us last year out of Tiger Lane when it got flooded. Um, but uh, that's kind of how it all happened. It all happened by accident. Mm -hmm. We didn't sit down and plan on cooking in the World Championship barbecue. We didn't even right. plan on building a Tucker cooker. Right. It just, it just kind of evolved into that over time. And, mm -hmm. and, and I think that's one of the neat things about Tucker is that it, it grew slowly. We weren't trying to create a company, really. The mm -hmm. company created itself. Right. You know, we talked about the family the other day. Mm -hmm. you know, I started calling it the Tucker Cooker family because everybody kept hanging around with each other like a family. You know, they didn't just take their cooker and go home and you didn't hear about them anymore. They rode us back, they came by, they sent us pictures, you know. So it just, it has become a family. Yeah. You know, it's been really cool. That's what barbecue's all about, it's, you know. And, but uh, you grew up going to Memphis and May as a child, didn't you? Oh, yeah. We've been doing Memphis and May forever. You know, it's, it's, it's just been down there. It, it actually was part of the Cotton Carnival, I believe, at one time. We used to celebrate the Cotton Carnival. We used to have a, a Cotton Carnival parade. Uh, I, I don't think they've done that the last few years. But Memphis in May, or the barbecue event, from my understanding, was a part of that Cotton Carnival group of events that happened through the springtime. And well, well, now that you are involved, and, and I, I know you got the bug, and I can see a little something going on over there. I mean, down the road, I mean, you're going to try and take Tucker now. Go ahead and take it to the top. Well, Tucker is, is growing into bigger than, I, than it's really me. Um, we have several designs that we're working on to try to get in production, but we're just a really small company right now, and that's very difficult to do. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, uh, Tucker has a, I believe, a very good history. We have a good foundation. You know, mm -hmm. we, we, we have 540 loyal customers. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, really, uh, the, the future of Tucker is, is my ability to, to, to evolve it to where it can be. But I, I need some, I'm going to have to get some help to do that. It's, it's, it's yeah. uh, you know, I'm out here running machines, you know, grinding on, on, on the cookers. I mean, when, when you call us, I answer the phone. Yeah. You know, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're still a, a very small company. If you come in here and see us working, I mean, you'll see us with the files and sanders, you know, we're just kind of like hammering out a Lamborghini or something, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> like they used to. I don't know what they do now. But, <laughs> but, uh, it, it, this is old school fabrication. It's steel fabrication. It doesn't really depend on whether it's a cooker or a truck body. Um, you know, it's just uh, it, it's how you put that together, and 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 how well you want to do that as as a craftsman. And and we try to keep this thing at, at the highest standard that I know how to build it. Yeah. You see me? Mm -hmm. Now, folks, you know uh, they say industry in America is dead, and there's no more markets for us. You know. Uh, they could send anything that we do to India, China, Mexico, who knows where. But you know what? Barbecue's American made. They don't even know what they're doing with that. You know, so look, we've got Tucker here, we got you, American man. You know, uh, my son worked in a body shop. My son's got a body shop thing. And then uh, now he's doing uh, construction where he's digging dirt. Mm -hmm. But you know, I just want to shake your hand now. We support American people. By God, Memphis, you right up the hill from Memphis and May, you know? And uh, you need to buy a cooker from this man, if nothing else, to put people to work in Memphis. Because you get to produce a bunch of these cookers, you're gonna put these people to work down here. We try to. You ain't gonna go to India and get somebody. No, By God, they're gonna be down the street, aren't they? That's right. And man, we love you. And that's, that's uh, hey, Barbecue Superstars is telling you, T-U-C-K-E-R, by God, you better get your Tucker. And, uh, man, thank you so much for letting us come down oh, here today. Great. Great. And not many people allow us to uh, go actually go in their shop, but uh, good luck with all your new designs. And uh, now, Jennifer Brand, you know, I know you work with uh, Port Barrel Barbecue, but you know the people he needs. He needs people to do his marketing. He needs people to take care of that office stuff a little bit more so he can stay out here where his expertise is. And Jennifer Brand, if you would give him a call from Port Barrel Barbecue 
and not I know it's a conflict for you to actually get involved yourself but you can refer people that he needs and you know that's the, that's the thing barbecue superstar does we want to join up the right people and uh, she's barbecue she's the most barbecue uh, marketing hell yeah girl I've ever met in my life we love you Jennifer we just seen her in Las Vegas and uh, he needs some help so we call him on you give the man some help call them Tucker all right how can somebody get a hold of one of your cookers uh, Tucker Cooker, um, let's see, 578-3221. Uh, 901-578-3221. And www.tuckercooker.com. Dot com. All right, this is Daryl at Memphis of May. And you know what? It just seems like it just keeps getting better. I thought get going on Big Bob Gibson was going to be big. Hell, this is real big. <laughs> well, we're going to be moving on. We're going to go down make sure we get the finals and all for you. But uh, this is Daryl moving on. T-U-C-K-E-R. Tucker Cookers.